Hello and welcome to Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits, episode 115. My name is Meg and I will be your host. You're joining me again on a very rainy, cloudy, I feel like a broken record day. <laughs> it's Thursday again. I've done exactly a week. I am very proud of myself. This is a good, good thing that I've got going on. Um, and I will endeavor my darndest to uh, try and keep it up. So um, I am just working on some yarny bits today and some writing as well. Um, I want to work on my resume. I have a few jobs that I might apply for. So we shall see. Um, I'm drinking coffee today. It is Jingle Bones, which is the Christmas flavors from Bones Coffee Company. This one is Coconut Caramel Vanilla. It's very good. Um, and I have it in my very favorite mug. This one has a little bit of teal on the inside. It's my signature color on a signature mug. I have to say I love it so much. It's actually chipped um, at the bottom. It has a whole whole crack in it. Yeah, makes me very sad to see that. But anyway, um, and I'm enjoying it with uh, regular creamer, so it's bringing back out most of the flavors from the coffee. I think it's quite good. Um, what I am wearing. I am wearing a so faded that is not faded or it wasn't intended to be faded. It is slightly faded, but that's an accident. <laughs> Aren't you glad you got me so early in the morning? It is. Oh, I forgot my watch. All right. I'm going to restart this. <laughs> so this is my not technically so faded, but the so faded pattern by Andrea Mowry. It has short sleeves. I just did an I-cord bind off on that and the neckline. And feeling from the ease, I probably made the 38 to 41. And I used my You're Just As Sane As I Am Luna Love Good Colorway. Um, and the bottom is slightly less blue than the top because there are two different skeins. And I did not alternate. <laughs> And had I known that they were going to do this, I just would have flopped it and been fine to make the darker at the bottom. But I did not, alas, alack. But, um, yeah, so this is one of my, like, not tank tops, um, short tops. And I would wear them for, uh, for teaching with a sweater because I would get hot and then I could take it off and I wouldn't have any sleeves. So that was a good, that was a good thing. Um, okay. I'll explain why I'm looking just petting off of camera it's not gypsy unfortunately she is upstairs on her okay so we have a snoozer pet couch which is a round circle couch and it has a little lip on the top and then the dog can go in and be completely encompassed or they can kind of sit on the edge and be out now um uh we got her the xl even though she's not an xl dog just because she likes to spread out so then we were joking that she loves a heating pad so much that we should put it in there and warm her up. So one day for an you know, experiment, I took the, the heating pad, slid it in, zipped it back up and turned it on one. And she stayed a good bit of the day in there. So I do make sure that she has water and make sure that she doesn't get overheated, but she is happy as clam in a nice warm environment. Probably reminds her of her litter and it's soft and it's Sherpa. And so yeah, that's, um, that's what we've been doing for her, especially on cool, chilly mornings. It's only 30 degrees um, and that's Fahrenheit, 30 degrees and it's cold it's wet and it's damp and I'm not up there and I don't I'm not up there to hold the blankets and cuddle her in so when I'm not there it gives her that body heat that she's nesting because she's a snuggler and I love okay. it the coffee is just so good and I have relocated I know it's very dark in the background I'm going to be working on that but when I turn on my overhead lights I get all sorts of weird shadows on my face so I need another light behind you and I don't know what that's gonna be yet maybe to you know, do so anyway welcome to the podcast that was a whole lot of rambling I don't even remember what I started talking about what I was wearing maybe um yeah and I'm wearing um Maybelline matte ink lipstick in the color savant and I am wearing Ardell magnetic lashes that will be in a makeup with Meg segment got it <laughs> 
Um, and yeah, and I'm wearing my, my so faded with no sleeves in my Luna uh, colorway, which is you're just as sane as I am. I love her. I love her so much. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's what I'm wearing. And I think that um, brings me into maybe announcements, a little bit of a, you know, gotta tell you what's going on. So, um, officially Friday, the Hufflepuff dog sweater, not gal, not human, just dog, I'm working on it. <laughs> I'm working on it, give me some time, I'm working on it, I promise. Um, but the dog sweater, so cute. The dog sweater is going to be available to purchase. Yay! And it took a dollar off already. So it's up for five instead of six fifty or six. Um yeah, so I am I am super thrilled with this. I used uh all acrylic yarns and it really worked out for me. Oh, and it's um, actually been wearing very well for Gypsy as well. Uh, she won't tell you that because she um, kind of tucks her tail when I pull a, a sweater out. But once it's on her body, then she like, she's like, huh, well, this is the new normal and just keeps going on with her life. Like, nothing ever happened. She just acts like a drama queen when it comes out. But this is my absolute, it might be my favorite chart of the four that I've done. Slytherin might be my second, actually. That one is so creepy. I love the snake on that. Yeah. I have some thoughts. I have some thoughts. I think, um, and I don't know if I pitched this last week, but I think what I want to try to do is um, take the four um, house pieces, and um, I think I did say this. Yeah, um, repurpose sweater that I had bought, or blah, blah, blah. repurpose yarn that I bought for a pat sweater that I might just hold off on and use that yarn instead um, to do a infinity loop where I would do the um, the house chart. So it would be like a house chart, like a section, and then a house chart, and then a section, and then a house chart, and then a section of black. And um, each of the house charts would be in their designated color. So like. Hufflepuff and yellow and then Ravenclaw and blue, but the background would always be black So it'd be blue on black gold on black red on black green on black Yeah, yeah I think it would be a very cool idea and actually I keep showing you the worst side. I messed up that badger, so Let me Yeah, this one's correct. That one's wonky. This one's correct. But I am just, I am, I'm just in love with them. I'm just so in love with them. And it's almost, he's almost the size of my hand. Maybe I can make a mitten. <laughs> oh, oh, the wonders we wield. Okay, so yes, Hufflepuff coming out Friday officially. Um, I was doing some work on it and uploading the correct documents <clears throat> yesterday. So uh, I was finicking with it a little bit. Um, should be okay. Um, again, if there are any blatant problems, questions, please email me at badwolfgirlstudios at gmail.com. <laughs> that is one of my least cluttered emails because it's the newest. So I don't have, you know, a million things from Target and Michaels and Joann's and nitpicks and Ravelry and yeah, just a whole lot of everything on that. Um, this shawl I showed off last week, I want to say. Um, so this is the Impressionist shawl, uh, using all of my yarn. So it's Bellatrix T and the Dowager Countess. Um, and I actually got, uh, a few asks for this. So what I am going to do is I'm going to take, um, a photo or use one of Tara's photos because she took some very beautiful ones. Thank you, Tara. Um, and I'm going to just offer this combination for anything that you want. So it's kind of like a movie, tan, cream, and then, um, blur, black purple. It's like a blurple, but not a blue purple. It's a black purple. Yeah. Um, so I do have, do, do, do. I've got two of three right now, but I can have, 
um, I can have Hagrid stand in, for example. Oh golly, so blown out. Oh, it's so hard to see. Oh no, okay. So this is, um, this one isn't labeled yet, but we have uh, Bellatrix, blow it out. Yeah, it's T that's totally blowing things out. So there you go. Um, and Hagrid and Bellatrix in there. Oh, I gotta get, I keep, keep saying, gotta get better lighting, but I got better lighting and now I have lighting problems, so all fun stuff. Anyway, um, and then I wanted to talk about the fact that um, my pinks are on sale right now for Valentine's. So things like Pygmy Puff, Elizabeth Bennet, um, and Hagrid are all, let's get a better one of Hagrid, are all on sale doo -doo -doo -doo. for Valentine's. Um, even if you are buying it for Galentine's, you're buying it for yourself, you love you, that's cool by me. Um, it is a free ship code with the um, coupon code love it, all one word, capital, um, love it, uh, as in L-O-V-E-I-T. And uh, it's it's Hagrid, it's Elizabeth Bennet, it's Hermione Goes to the Yule Ball, Pygmy Puff. Oh my God, you guys, Madam Puttyfoot's Tea Shop, which is a baby pink. So all these fun, like Pinky Curl. If this is your wheelhouse, then this is the month to snag something. You get free shipping and you already have it marked down um, several dollars off of every skein that you buy. Um, I want to hug everyone who has shopped this update sale. Um, oh my gosh, I'm I, like my whole cart is just pink now and I love it. <laughs> um, I think we're going to keep the party going and I'm going to do a sale on everything green for uh, St. Patty's. So that would be things like Herbology and Amy Pond or Ginny Weasley. Uh, do, 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 do. Who else is green? Acid Pop is green. Uh, Forbidden Forest is green. Sprouts is green. Yeah, and a new one. Um, I'm definitely gonna have a specialty color for next month. Um, and I have a feeling that I am leaning into a blue-green vibe. Um, but anyway, so the pinks, the pinks, the pinks, the pinks are on sale. I do have um, four sparkly skeins of Hagrid on mat available right now, like ready to ship. And um, I'm going to list this. I have eight skeins of Pygmy Puff. I'm getting so blown out. Eight skeins of Pygmy Puff on a sport base. So this has 328 yards. Um, I was gonna use it for a sweater, but then I ended up using my matte base instead because I thought that I would just wear it more because I overheat so quickly nowadays that I didn't wanna push it. So, yay. <laughs> okay, I'm putting this stuff down now. Yay, it's going up. Um, but yeah, so if you are interested, I'm gonna be putting that up. It is, um, it's a really nice plump uh, cabled, twisty type of sport, um, really gorgeous. You could go up to, uh, um, if you <clears throat> like sport weight, I've got you covered. Great for mittens too. Um, though I would definitely wash those guys in ice cold water because that pink, you do not want to encourage it to go hot again. Mm -mm. Please keep it in cold water. It's the safest way to keep your colors from running. And you could also, oh, it's raining now. Um, you could also use a color catcher, which you put in your wash and it catches some of that bl um, bleeding yarn. So anyway, um, all to say that Dowager Countess, uh, once I get that uh, dyed up and photographed, will be um, in the uh, Valentine update as well, which is going pretty much to the end of February. I wonder if I could wear this. I realized very um, surprisingly this morning that I don't have any pink sweaters. I, um, I gifted Hagrid. So I had Hagrid. Yeah, see. Like if I wore a tee, I would be literally wearing nothing. 
because it just blends way too much into my body. Um, hua. Try that. This is not going to stay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, but I, uh, I gifted Hagrid, so I don't have that one anymore. And then um, I do have a Bellatrix, but it's purple. Uh, and I had no pinks or anything. So I have rem remedied that since, um, and that will be in my whips section. Um, do I have any FOs? No, but I do have an FO to show you. I just didn't do it. But as it's my pattern and my yarn, I feel, um, I feel compelled to show off what good knitting my friend Ashley has done. So... Sorry, Ash, putting you on spot. Uh, we haven't woven an end yet. And I say we because I it, Ashley wove them and I can clip them. I just haven't yet. I'm so sorry, Ash. I will. <laughs> I'll see her this weekend. So, in my DK base. And let me see if I can get a little bit more light here. And just turn up the light on my computer to see if that works. Yay, it does. So, Ashley is testing my Quidditch crop in DK. Um, for this, you're getting about four and a half to four stitches per inch. Um, she worked with a US 7, and considering the fabric, it's really, it's a very nice fabric, but if you want anything drapier, I would say you could go up to a US 8. So she has used um, two colors for the Quidditch crop and knit it a teeny bit longer so it does go down to the top of her um, band for jeans. Uh, the blocking really smooths everything out. This gray is, I'm gonna get it, Wolfsbane. And the um, mauve red is Hagrid from uh, the original batches. So um, Hagrid got a little bit more red over the years and this is now more akin to like Dowager Countess mauve. Um, oh, she did put the stripe at the end. I love it. I love it so much. So this is a Gryffindor style nod. So it's, um, it's, it's red and gray. Um, I just think it turned out so cute so wearable her eye cords sitting flatter um because eye cords get a little weird uh, what else i think the stripe placement turned out really cute not too high or low i will have to physically see it but it's it's kind of um let's see if i can just back up a little bit yeah so you can imagine imagine doo 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 Yes. Oh, it's going to be so cute. But yes. So the Quidditch crop in DK um, is a pattern in the works. I'm hoping uh, maybe a September release. Um, I desperately need to test sizes from like 52 and up. Um, so if you are interested, please feel free to email me um, your name and what size you're hoping to test, um, either your bus size or your bus size plus ease. Um, I like my garments. I have a 30, mm, I say I have a 38, I'm not really sure it's true anymore, but I'm going to keep saying it. Um, I have a 38 and I knit a 42 and that is comfy for me. So if that's the amount of ease that you like in your garments, like a little bit of wiggle room, but it's not as drapey as a boxy where you have like 22 inches of ease. Um, though, I mean like, you could pretty much try to, to do this with that amount of ease for a boxy. I'm gonna turn this light down just a tip. There we go. Um, yes, so um, Quidditch crop in Wolfsbane and Hagrid. I love it. I love it. I hope she loves it. I hope she loves it to death. She loves it until it pills and it's crazy. Um, yeah, I love it. So actually, all right, so I was folding it this way where I would take the sleeve and kind of wobble it in like that and then Marie Kondo it on itself. Boop. Just so that she doesn't have too many wrinkles by the time I give it back to her. Um, but I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. Thank you, Ashley, for testing that. 
I actually can't remember what size, but she um, she knit one of the smaller sizes. Maybe the second one in. First one or second one in. And to get it drapier, I would say a US 8 for her gauge would, would pop her up into like a floatier fabric. But this one just feels cozy and plush and plump. Can't be mad about it. She's also given me a great insight into yardage where um, she made it, but there was a little bit of yarn chicken happening. So had any of those skeins had 50 more yards on there, would have been close, but not as close. So um, that would be me recommending an extra ball where I wasn't aware that it was needed. Yes, okay. Um, I guess that brings me into, well, that was like a finished object. Um, and yeah, um, no jibs. She's down here now. Yeah, you can see her collar. Um, that will bring me into whips, which I really thought I only had one of um, that I could show. I have another test that I can't show, so I, I've i been putting a lot of work into that, but I can't show anything, so I felt kind of silly podcasting a week later. Um, but, but... I started something and then I started another something and then I worked on something else and something else. So then I, I was going through and I was like, oh my gosh, I actually do have quite a few things. So let me get started. Um, <clears throat> in my movie going bag uh, from Missy from Minnesota. I love this. Um, it's my popcorn bag. It's got a little popcorn on it. Uh, I love taking this to movies so fun uh is my seven c's sock i've gotten up to the cuff so i went back to the gold which i thought was fun it's on the toe as well went back to the brown gold i marked where the heel is going to be and um i would say maybe five more rows for the cuff and i will be I would be pleased with that. I like to get them to about there and then let it go. And typically I just fold them in half. So when these lengths match up, the sock is done. That's a comfy, I mean, I really, I could do less. I could do less, but that's something that I have been doing. So I might just do a couple more rows and then I will start the second sock. Um, and on the front, I have two Simply Serving Progress Keepers. She is um, a community clay artist uh, who is currently under the weather, and we are all wishing her super good vibes to get better soon. Um, she's working on a collaboration right now for Moana, and obviously that is on a tiny bit of a hold because she is ill. So we're all being patient. Um, Patience is not my strong suit, but I am trying. So this is the little blue Maryland crab charm that she made me for last year's um, public knit toxication. I wanted a special charm. Um, then I realized that the, the show is in Virginia because it's the winery in Virginia and they're not Maryland pride, but um, Rising Tide Fiberco thought it was fun, so she bought a crab. And then I have this little guy, which is a confetti cake roll. Um, it just looks like it's like a birthday cake to me, but I love it. I love I love her charms. I love her charms. They've they've gotten so good um, over the past couple of years. Not that they weren't, but she's just growing with every single charm. It's amazing. So that is my first project. I'm just gonna move things to the side. Second one, going back into Christmas in my Nutcracker bag. This is a beautiful kind of quilted, oh, so good, so squidgy. Um, and this is the, answer, 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 from Sugar Tots, that's it. I am working <clears throat> on my Christmas cast on socks. This was a gift from my friend Trish. Thanks, Trish. And I took them to the movies. And I would say that I had a progress keeper in, 
but I dropped a stitch. So now the progress keeper is holding my stitch. But that is um, actually, I was about two rows above when I started for the movies. So I got from here, I'll just mark. I got from there to there in the movie. We went to go see Birds of Prey, The Emancipation of Harley Quinn. And I have to say, she gave me a lot of short hair ideas with those pigtails. She was really rocking them, very cute. Um, but yeah, so socks are coming along. Um, try to get that one in front so you can see the charm. That's about where I started and I got all the way up. I really don't like the second sock here. I have half a mind to separate them, finish this sock, continue knitting with this and make another sock and um and let it go in that direction but it wouldn't be completely gold and then maybe make another sock and maybe those these will be i don't know i think that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna separate them because i really love the brown and I really don't love the gold. Or maybe I just don't love them together. If they were just even, I think I'd just accept it. But the fact that they're so different, it's driving me mad. So yeah, I'm gonna separate that. And I think, definitely past the heel. So I could kind of make these shorties. I wanna say my heels are normally about here anyway. So I am probably that's plenty leg. That's like a three inch leg for me. And do the cuff here. And the heel's gonna be a contrast, so I wouldn't use any more yarn. Um, I've still got a good bit of the ball cake thing. So, yeah, yeah. Thanks for being here as I solve problems. Um, that's all I'll do. I'll separate it and I'll make two brown ones. I'll fix that stitch. Um, I just don't, I don't love how it's going. It's unfortunate. So unfortunate, because I love a homespun house. It's just nature of hand-dyed yarn. I get it. And most people would knit them one at a time and would see a, a gradual difference. Like, I'm working end-to-end -end here, so they just really, they really, really go in two different directions. Okay, so then um, I'm working again. Uh, I'm working on that mandala. Cake. You can see I have cast on and I've used up quite a bit. Um, this has been living in my mermaid project bag by Georgianne of the Stitching Plaza. I love these mermaids. Um, I've been feeling very mermaidy because I've watched all of the aerials on Disney Plus now from Ariel's beginning to the Little Mermaid to Ariel's Return to the Sea. Yeah, all of it. Just had it on the other day to whole wash marathon. So anyway, I have started um, a little puppy sweater for Jippy. And it's really funny because I stopped talking a little bit there and she came down. That's why she was asking for treats. She thought I was done um, because I had paused. I was looking for a long cord to put something else on, but I can't find it. I'll do it next week when it has more on it anyway. Um, so yes, this is the mandala. The stripes are much larger than I thought they would be. But they're cute. And this one is like a double stripe because these colors, either they are the same color or they're not the same color and they look like the same color. I think there might maybe be a different, but anyway. So you've got, um, I did go with the Garnet Maroon and then Mauve Baby Pink and now we're into Purple. Where's that Mauve? Mm. Yeah, they're kind of the same. Okay, so anyway. Um, yeah, it's purpley though. Lavender. So I have split for the armholes. So here are her armholes. I've tried it on her, it does fit. Um, she needs about an eight inch depth in her yoke. And so that's what I've been going with. Um, 
and it fit well. I went up to a an eight because I couldn't find my sevens, but these are now sevens because I found them down here yesterday. So <clears throat> I was on a six. No, try it again. I was on a five for the ribbing, and then I did a six for this part that's all kind of tight, and then I did um, a, uh, I think a six up to here or so, and then I did um, an eight. Yeah, I wanna say I switched the eight about here, so I did the eight all the way through, and now I am on the seven. Um, boop. And I'm using a little um, ghost with a peppermint just because it's red and white and it went with the Valentine theme. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that is, um, that's over halfway done and this was like two days of work. Um, again, I was working a lot on other things. I can't show right now, but um, yeah, I needed a break because um, a lot of the stuff I've been doing recently is color work and the, like my eyes, my heads, my hands. Uh, I just, I did. I needed a break. So, more coffee. I can't even tell you how excited I am that I figured out I could podcast two feet to the right because it put me squarely within reach of my coffee warmer again. It was, it was life changing. <laughs> May all things be so simple to be life changing. Now I want to do, I want to do, I want to do have a chatter. What? I want to have a chatter on my Forbidden Forest. It is blown out. It's much more like that. But Forbidden Forest and I've been doing a um, basket weave stitch on there. Unfortunately, my brain is not really up even to do basket weaving on dark yarn. Um, I've been debating ripping it out and turning it into something else. Um, I mean, the texture is gorgeous and it feels nice and it looks nice. Um, but as you can see, I am way up here just under the um, sleeve split and I have only made it an inch or so and it's just I'm already over it I'm already so burnt out on it so I don't know what to do I don't know what to do it's just such a it's such a shame that I'm so burnt out already I think it's because I've been knitting so many sweaters recently that my my full attention span is kind of done and all I'm up to is a lot of knitting in the round <laughs> because the color work takes so much out of me. Then I get to this and I'm like, I can't even, I can't. Um, so I'm gonna let it sit another week and then see if it makes me feel any different. This was cast on in like December and it's already February and at first I was like, oh, it's because I had this deadline. And then I was like, oh no, it's because I had this deadline. And then it was because I came up with something else. And then I bought that blue yarn and I desperately needed to make that. And yeah, I just kept putting it on the back burner. And I very much say if it's not yes, it's no. If you're trying something on and you have to ask somebody else's opinion, you know the answer. Because if you truly love it, you do not care what they think. I love shopping with people. I love people like confirming what I think, but if I'm shopping by myself and I try something on and I'm not Im immediately like, oh yes, look at me, then it's probably a no. <laughs> it's probably a no. Yeah, because so many things, like I put them on and I'm like, yes, that's it. That's all that was needed. So, more coffee. Oh, coffee. I'm so excited to be in the reach of my warmer. Okay, so I did this project, I did that project, talked about this project. I've got two skeins to talk about. I've got a Valentine gift, Valentine gift. Okay, 
So my last cast on is a bit impulsive. I know I have, <laughs> I have test knitting to do, but <laughs> I needed something that would bring me joy and my blue sweater's done. So <laughs> I realized that I had no pink in my closet and I had recently, where are you? Uh, there it is. Recently dyed up a whole bunch of pygmy puff. And I just thought it is the perfect little spring Easter Valentine sort of color. And um, I did pair it with um, my fuzzy pygmy puff from Simply Serving. So let's see if I can get this all together. Oh, there's the pygmy puff. Isn't she adorable? Boop, boop, boop. Or it could be a he, it could be Arnold the Pygmy Puff. I love it, I love it so much. The simplicity of the idea is brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. And I'm using some stoppers like Kay does. These are gifts from Trish again. Um, so, this is Pygmy Puff. Yes, it's this Brighton person. Um, yes, I am alternating skeins because my skeins, the nature of Pygmy Puff is that it is, um, it's got hot spots and dark spots, so it uh, needed a blending. So I am, I am sort of, you know what, I'm not. I'm not doing helical knitting, I'm doing the idea of helical knitting. So every row I swap and I do not cross so you'll see, I do not, I've been, I've been alternating for a few rows. I have no line going along the back. I have no line because of how I do this. So I'm going to try to do it on camera. This ought to be interesting. Okay. All right, so this, put my, yep. This is the old strand. This is the progress keeper. This is the inside of my work. This is the strand that I'm working with right now. So I am going to go ahead and knit the last two stitches. So it is now my progress keeper, my old yarn under here, and my new yarn up here. You see that? So I now take the progress keeper, swap it over. I'm going to go into the first stitch of the next row. I'm going to drop the working yarn. I'm going to pick up without, I'm dropping it almost like back towards me here, over here, not this way, not that way. I'm not crossing it. I'm keeping it completely out of the way of the other one. And I just give this a little tug not a lot of tug. I'm going to knit two stitches and then on the third I'm going to tug a little bit on that just to, to tighten that up. So now I have the current working yarn now which was old. The old current that is now old Oh Lord. And then um, that one is sitting on this side of the progress keeper. The new one is now knitting through. And since I did not cross them, there is no seam. Now for this, you're able to do a helical style knitting where there's no seam. However, you're not doing the whole knit two, slip the three, start with the new, go back around, go to three before, stop, slip the three, do the knit, which um, when I'm watching TV, I, I don't have a ton of bandwidth, um, usually left. If I'm watching TV, I'm zoned out. I'm tired, I'm sitting for the first time in hours, and do, 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 wah, wah, poor me, I know. Anyway, so um, mostly what I'm saying is I like monotony. I do, I, I like knitting in the round. I do, I just, I enjoy garter stitch. It's just, 
the weird type of bird I am. So um, this allows me to blend my yarns without helical knitting. Now, if I notice that this is still not blocking, breaking, if it's still not breaking up the color pooling satisfactorily, I will switch to helical knitting and put up with doing the craziness. <laughs> It's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant plan, truly. Um, I just think this doesn't create a seam and is somehow easier. Yeah, for me, mentally. Just drop the working yarn to your right, pick up the new one, tug a little bit, a little bit, not a lot of it. A lot of it, you're gonna choke the stitch below. Just teeny tug, knit one, two, tug, 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 knit, 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 all the way across. So, and that's, that's it. I am just working through. So for this, I am working on a circular pullover based off of my Hogwarts of History numbers. I am doing eyelets in this one to add some romance because I think lace adds a little bit of romance. I was tempted by, who was I tempted by? The love note for this, but um, as we just explained, my bandwidth is uh, low to no. Um, when I do have uh, two strands, I do notice that they get a little twisty, so I'll just pick it up, put the two strands over my fingers, hold them apart until they untwist themselves, and then keep going. Um, this is like all, all I want to work on right now. Um, I have been so in love with color work. It's true. And I am not giving up on it by any means. I would love to make a sweet little Valentine yoke that has to do with something. Um, but I'm a bit, I'm a bit burnt this week and last week on color work and, um, I just could not bring myself to make this one color work, even though I thought pink hearts would look super cute. I think it's also um, probably, and I say year round, which my sweaters are not year round because of where I live. Uh, it's warm, so um, yeah. So it'll make it more versatile overall. Uh, and I'm trying to get back to, I'm trying to get back to the beginning so I can do it again for you, if you can see it. I'll just cut. All right, so once again, I got the working yarn. I'm going to knit to the marker. This is the um, old yarn down here, so I'm gonna slip this over, put it in, drop it to the side or the front, whatever's easier for you. Grab the old, give it a tiny tug just to get it from being too loose, and then one, two, tug, 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 and we're off again. And now there's no seam, none, no seam. Any tight stitches, if you're tugging too tight, um, you can, you know, adjust as you're going. But any stitches will block out most likely, as well as hopefully my lace. So let me show that off a little bit. So I'm doing eyelets in here and I've done ribbing and I am super excited for this color. Super duper excited. I think that it's going to, I'm trying to like show you how Pygmy Puff looks on me. I think it'll look really cool. Um, I love a good like violet magenta. <laughs> so good. Um, but yeah, so let me get the little markers back on this or I will sit here and knit an entire podcast, which is kind of like Hannah's crafty chat. Um, but yeah, so speaking of things in the shop, I do have a scan of how far I'll go. Um, and if you don't want to see it, I am shipping things as quickly as possible. But if you ordered a charm, they're not done yet. They're not here yet. So I cannot physically give you what you need. I'm so sorry. So um, this is Pygmy Puff and How Far I'll Go, the Moana Single Skein Color. Three, two, one. Close your eyes. Okay. So this is how they play together, and I think it's brilliant. 
absolutely brilliant. I also think that Bellatrix plays very well with them too. Yep. So fun. So fun. All right, I've put it away. So yes, um, we do have uh, <clears throat> more listings for single skein. So if you enjoy the How Far I'll Go, please feel free to pick it up before uh, the end of the month because that is when it shall float away and then I shall promptly forget all of my notes <laughs> and I won't be able to recreate it. So um, just oh, obsessed. Okay, um, talking about Valentine's, as in um, I made my husband the uh, lumberjack sweater, which he tried on and he looked so good in it. Oh my gosh, um, I can't wait to get a photo. He also requested two buttons that would be faux buttons. They don't actually do anything, but two buttons to hold it uh, on the neck there. And uh, I don't know if he wants buttons or toggles, but we can go to Joann's and figure that out. Um, that's the biggest button selection I know because Michaels and AMC Moore don't have as big a selection of buttons. Um, but so I gave him that sweater. I gave him a stamp. It has a GSP and our address on it with um, Dr. and Mrs. because he's a PhD, so doctor. And um, it has like a, the dog and the, your writings on there, it's so cute. So I gave him that and then um, I also gave him the candy, but I kept the llama. So this little one was from CVS and uh, she's part of the, I think I showed her off before. But I'm obsessed. It's so cute. It reminds me of um, those big eyed llamas from the Fantastic Beast movie. Like, so cute. Gypsy wants her in the worst way. And I keep telling her no because I know what she'll do to this poor sweet creature. She'll, she'll find a seam and then make it go away. And I love it too much. So. Um, she's super cute and she's gonna sit right up there in future, but I did take her down and then Pat got me A golden snitch Can you see this can you see this oh my gosh, so it's from pottery barn teen um, And it has the uh, little golden snitch wings and it is a candy dish or a, a dish holder. So it's super cute. Um, and it kind of like sits like that so it doesn't slide totally off. It's got a little lip to catch it. Um, it is so cool. Can you imagine if the snitch was actually this big? Like that's my entire hand <laughs> trying to hold this thing. Oh my gosh, and it's actually kind of heavy too. Um, but. I just love it. I absolutely love it. It's so fun. So this was my Valentine gift. Pat nailed it. I think it's amazing. And I don't know where it's gonna go yet, but I I, I love it. I love it so much. Um, also, we're going to New Orleans uh, in like two weeks for Mardi Gras. And so um, previously, uh-oh. Oh, the yarn snapped. One of these. Hopefully it's, hopefully it's not in the middle of a skein. Oh, that's gonna suck. Anyway, I got somebody throw me some beads. Which I just thought would be super fun. Um, I do have one that's Mardi Gras, but I liked the idea of the zombie layer in there. Um, it's uh, a little more pastel than I thought it would be in person. Um, Maybe the purple gets darker on the inside. So I'm going to cake this up and get it ready um, and pick out, I guess pick out some toes to go with it because um, like Bellatrix I think would go really well. I think I've got some Bellatrix up upstairs anyway, so that'll work. Um, 
So yeah, Zombuddy, throw me some beads. And this is going to be my travel knitting for New Orleans. I'm so excited, so excited. So I'm going to cake this up. And I think that's everything there. Um, my last bits, I have, I told you about shop stuff and everything. Um, I did by myself um, the Fitbit Versa 2. So this one, very pretty. And uh, it has um, Alexa capabilities, which is very fun. So I'm able to add things to my shopping list or, or do stuff like that. Um, if you have an Android, your Fitbit can rep do quick replies on text messages. Um, your phone calls come through so that you see them, uh, but you have to answer it on your phone for iPhone. I'm not sure if you can actually answer it on your Fitbit. Maybe you can, well, I can like pick it up. I can, I can hit hello and then grab my phone. Um, but anyway, I am selling my old Fitbit. That is this one right here. It's rose gold and it comes with coral bands. And I'll show you the screen. Um, like so. There's nothing wrong with it. I just have another version, that's all. So it comes with heart rate capabilities. It, uh, you can download your music on it. It does GPS for running or walking. Um, it does spinning, yoga, all those good things as well. Um, I'm a huge Fitbit fan. Um, so I spent 150 on my new one. Um, if I could get half price, on my old one, which is about, I spent about 120. So if I can get um, about 65 for this, uh, I'd be thrilled. So if you are interested and you want to message me, badwolfgirlstudios at gmail.com um, or Instagram even would be fine, but I will take photos. It's in perfect condition. It comes with the charger. I've got the um, coral bands as well. Um, there is absolutely nothing truly wrong with it. I just liked the um, Alexa capability on the new watch, which is why I got it. But um, I am hoping to give this little guy a new home. So if you have been looking into getting a Fitbit and uh, the price tag is just too much, this one is only two years old. Uh, so it's still extremely new. Um, and then another thing that I'm letting go, I thought I'd ask if anybody wanted it, is a jewelry holder. So it, um, it opens like so. And then you've got these little slots in here. And what I had been doing is putting all of my charms um, and putting them on display. Uh, but I recently was inspired by Lindsay of Simply Serving, so I just went ahead and got um, a little compartmentalizer. So um, I would love to give this one a new home. Um, if you would like it and you'll pay for shipping, she's yours. Um, but yes, uh, and I think that's all of the, uh, you know, admin that I wanted to get through at the end of the podcast. Um, other than that, life stuff, oh, things have been fine. A um, bit overwhelmed with the designing. I think I bit off quite a bit at once, so um, I will be doing my best. Um, and that's all we can do. It's true. <sighs> been getting Gypsy out for walks, but not getting myself true walks, really. Um, and it's just been gross. It's been gross, gross, gross. The winery has been fun. Um, the Beauty and the Beast theme doesn't get old. So fun. The food plate is excellent. The drink this month is so good. Um, and company with new friends is wonderful. So uh, that has been super duper fun. And um, yeah, we're gonna have a little makeup with Meg se segment at the end. I am not used to that yet. Um, but yeah, 
I think that's everything I've got. I feel like I've blabbered on a lot. I'm gonna have to edit this down later. So I'm going to just cut out, get myself to pass Meg uh, so that she can do how I put my eyelashes on. And I know there's a few bloopers I'll flip in at the end because um, I definitely flubbed a few lines. <laughs> so, um, wishing you an excellent week and just to take life one cup at a time no matter how large that cup may be. And I will see you next week. Bye. And welcome to our segment of Makeup with Meg. <laughs> um, I figured I would pre-record this, so this is Meg from the past to you. Um, this is the first thing that I am recording. I am going to put my eyelashes on. I don't know how well this is gonna translate over the video, but I uh, figured it would be interesting for you to see. So I'm working with this box right here is the Ardell um, Wispies Magnetic Lashes with Gel Liner. So, can you see it? Yeah. So this is the Ardell. There are a few that Ardell has done. I like these best. Sorry, camera's over here. I'm going to have to look this way a bit just to see where my eyes are. Um, but I will d endeavor to look at you as much as possible. Okay, so um, take the gel out, take the brush out, front facing camera, does not zoom. <sighs> okay, so the pot, the pot looks like this. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, you can see it. Okay. Um, and what I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and apply it along my lash line. I have a feeling I'm going to wish I had a mirror that's a little closer than you. And I don't think I have one down here. Oh, we shall wing it. All right, so I'm going to jam the gel onto the, the as close to the lash line as I can get. And that's basically it. I'm gonna let that dry for about 30 seconds. At this point, I normally would brush my brush off. All I have is paper, so that's what I'll do. Just try not to let it cake up on there um, because the more that you let it cake up on there, the drier and harder it will be to use later. Um, so actually just cleaning it out would be best, but since I I'm doing this kind of sporadically. I'm just going to brush it off. You can't even see. Brush it off in this little piece of paper to get most of the goopies off and put it back into its little home. I always try to return my makeup stuff so that it uh, stays there for me. Mm. All right. I'm sitting, I'm sitting slightly over today. If you can't tell, probably talk about that earlier. Now this I also feel like I could use a little bit of cleaning on. Um, what I kind of do is just run my nail along the magnetic strips to try and push off any of the old liner. Oh, this is going to be such an attractive shot. I am not a makeup blogger. This is something that I would have to practice at to get better at, but let's see how we do. I normally line up my inner corner first try it again so I kind of let the magnets do a lot of the work on this I just kind of feel until it feels like it's clicking to something and then I push it in a little bit once I feel it's clicking to something 
and I've already put on mascara so um, when I get it onto there and I push it down I usually uh, pinch the lash and my mascara natural lash together a little bit almost as if it's gonna hold it there I don't know if it really does anything but I like it I am wearing um, another Maybelline color. This one is Savant. Um, it is a really nice pinky color. I'm really enjoying it. Um, yes. And I'm actually wearing Maybelline tattoo on my eyebrows as well. So honestly, Maybelline, you should hire me because I wear all your products, right? Yep. Do, 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 do. I promise I'll get better at this if you hire me. All right, and they're on. This is the podcast. So uh, that's how you will see me earlier. This is how it got done. A little behind the scenes magic on that. I lost the top. There it is. Uh, once again, trying to keep all my stuff together. So while the puppy is quiet and while I have some time, I will dive right in and get back to the podcast. Hi, Jeffo. Hello. 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 How are you? Can you see her? She's totally out of frame, isn't she? Come here. Come on, touch. Touch. Good girl. Mwah. This is this is my baby gypsy. Co-worker, partner in crime. of a coffee. Do another giant setup, but maybe a big big light or a big lamp or something. Um, I am next to the computer as well now, so I've just scooched over because I realized, so my mom's moving in like three weeks or something. It's like the first week in March-ish she will be moving. And um, I just, I realized that this piece that I was recording on was not going to stay because it's part of her desk because I treated her her desk for our, the desk that I have now so I have both desks um, and yeah so <laughs> I realized I wasn't gonna get to keep it and I better not get too comfy on it and I was getting very comfy on it <laughs> like putting all of my recording stuff and all of my other stuff so um, I do still need to clear it off but I am gonna clear it off and clean it out um, because I just it's not gonna be here <laughs> and I need to get my setups set up so that um, it works for me right now. So, um, still got the ring light. I still feel that I am pretty well lit. The background, not so much. It is just gross and cloudy. That kind of gives you an idea of how yuck it is outside. If I turn these lights out, you'd probably think it was around six. It's no bueno. So anyway, welcome to the podcast. That was a whole lot of rambling. I